We're continuing with solving trig equations, and we're going to use some of the tools that we've learned from our formula sheet. So these identities, if they're valid that we've, that we've learned, that we've established, we could use them in an equation if that's useful to us. So let's take a look at just how we could do that. So this one is not going to seem very intuitive. You'd have to scour your formula sheet to see this. But if you take a look at this, what we have here is a difference formula for cosine. So this on your formula sheet is the difference formula for a cosine function. So I can make a substitution. All of this could be replaced with the difference of that cosine, and then we're just going to subtract the two angles. Now, why is that helpful to us? Look how much it's going to simplify it. It's going to turn this into cosine of negative x equals radical 3 over 2. Well, the fact that this is an even function can let me turn this into cosine of x. So that's that substitution, although it may not have been all that intuitive, <laughs> you'd really scour for that one, but that leads us to something that we saw in our first video. We just need to now solve cosine of x equals radical 3 over 2. So just read your unit circle. Where do we get a value for cosine that's radical 3 over 2? Well, we get that at pi over 6. Now, cosine is positive here, so that happens in the first and fourth quadrants. So if pi over 6 is our reference angle, we'd also get 11 pi over 6. Now, we don't have to worry about the plus or minus 2 pi k on this one because they limited us to one trip around the circle. Okay, let's take a look at another. If, I, if I'm looking at this formula here, I have to take note that I've got a double angle and a regular theta. So these are not the same. So simply like trying to put these on the same side of the equation, I can't combine them. So what I'm going to look at is I'm going to look to my identities, and I'm going to think this is my double angle formula. So if I use sub, make a substitution here with my double angle, I get this. Okay, now what good has that done me? Well, watch this. Now, anytime we have quadratic, anytime we'd have like x squared, we want one of the sides to equal zero. So we can factor it, use the quadratic equation, whatever. So I'm going to send this cosine theta to the other side, and I get this. Now, this can be factored. If you don't see that, so if it was 2x squared minus x minus 1, I could just factor this. And if it doesn't make sense, remember we talked about, I, you can make this substitution and just call cosine, or u equal to the cosine of theta. And then it would become 2u squared minus u minus 1. We talked about that in an earlier video. But you could factor it just like this. Just think of cosines as being variables, and, and then you can just factor it down. Now when we get here, we have the zero product property, which says if I had 2x plus 1 and x minus 1 both equal zero, either one of those could be the reason this whole thing is turning into zero. So I set them both equal to zero. Well, I'm going to do the same here, but look what happens. If I set these both equal to zero, I have two little mini trigonometric equations like in our last video. So I've got cosine of theta is negative 1 half and cosine of theta is 1. And this is going to create quite a number of different solutions. So looking on my unit circle, when is cosine negative 1 half? Well, we have negative 1 half at two places, 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. So this is our 60 degree reference angle here creates this. Now there was no restriction about one time around the circle. It wasn't there. So we've got to add our plus 2 pi k. Now we're still not done because the, the way we factored this, this is creating lots of solutions. I have to take a look at this one as well. When is cosine of theta equal to 1? Well, that occurs right at this initial angle of 0. So cosine of theta equals 1 at 0, but we didn't have the restriction about one time around, so we've got to add the plus 2 pi k. So we actually get three solutions, and in this one they can all spin all the way around the circle. All right, let's try another one. Now, when I'm looking at this equation, I see that, that I have cosine and sine in here. I am not going to be able to solve that. So I'm going to have to turn something, into the, one, one of these into the other. And the easiest way to do that is, if I see sine squared, I'm thinking about the Pythagorean identity. I could turn sine squared into 1 minus cosine squared and make a substitution right here. Do you see that? Now distribute the 2, and I get this. 
Okay, now anytime I've got quadratic, I've got to the degree of 2, I'm going to get a 0 on one side. I'm going to send everything to the other side. Now, just like we saw before, I can just factor this as if it was x's, as if they were x's. So I factor that down. Now, zero product property says solve each of those. So I set one of them equal to zero and the other one equal to zero, and I'm solving. When does cosine of theta equal negative one-half? Well, that's a reference angle of 60. Cosine is negative here and here in quadrant two and quadrant three. So I get two solutions, 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Now I don't have to spin around the circle this time because they limited me. Now when does cosine equal negative 1? That's over here. So I get one more solution when the angle is equal to pi. So three solutions. I don't need the 2 pi k. All right. Now we're going to have a little bit of trickery on this last type of problem. We're going to see, sometimes we're going to have what would be, uh, we're, we're thinking, we haven't thought of it like this in a while, but this is like a double angle in here. But do you remember that we can have horizontal stretches or compressions? Do you remember that sine of 2x? That 2, it works the opposite of what you'd think. This is horizontal because it's in on the x. Now, that is a compression. It's the opposite of what you would think. So this compresses it by a factor of 1 half. And so what's going to happen here is that the, un the, the, the sine function has now been squeezed tighter. Now I'm going to show you the trick that this is required. This is just what's kind of happened behind the scenes. But if we have something in here other than x, we have to keep, and we're solving an equation, we have to keep in mind that this is a compression. Now let me, sh I'll show you what that's going to do here. So I would solve this in the normal way. There's some angle, where does that equal to 1 half? Well, uh, it's not all that helpful. So where do I get a cosine equal to 1 half? I get it at a 60 degrees or pi over 3. So let me do this myself here. So cosine, well, hold on. So it wasn't just theta in there. It's 2x. So it's a double angle. So 2x is going to equal to pi over 3. Now, 2x is also, because this is my reference angle, Cosine is also positive in the fourth quadrant, so I'm also going to get 5 pi over 3. Okay, everything so far has been like normal. Now here's what changes just a little bit. Because of this compression, what's going to happen here is we need to check out for the possibility that we've created some extra solutions because we're repeating, because the cosine function is repeating more often than we would have thought because he's compressed. So let's just do this. We're just going to add our 2 pi k onto all of these. Now it doesn't seem necessary because they told us it's one time around the circle, but the problem is because it's compressed, we might have some strange things happening here. So let's do this. Okay? Now if I were to solve this, all I'm going to do is divide the, I want x, so I'm going to divide both of these by 2. Now before I do, let's do some, one little bit of house cleaning here. I'm going to turn these into 6 pi over 3, just so we're talking the same language. So just so that we're seeing that this is extra times around the circle. It, it hasn't changed anything. I just wanted to see that they had a common denominator. It'll help us in just a second. Okay, now... All of this, we're, we're tacking this on, even though it doesn't seem necessary, because it might be this time, because we've compressed. So I'm going to just divide the x to the other side, or the 2 to the other side. Now it's going to go to both of them. If I divide this entire side over here by 2, I'm going to get pi over 6 plus or minus 6 pi over 6. You with me there? Just divided the whole side, it's got to go to both of these. And over here, I'd get 5 pi over 6 plus or minus 6 pi over 6. Okay, now here's what we've got. Oh, you know what? I don't think I want to change that. Hold on. I think it'd be helpful if I don't change it. Okay, so we're not going to change it. Okay, now here's what we're saying. 
I know that pi over 6 is a solution. And I know that 5 pi over 6 is a solution. But we need to check just to make sure that because of the compression, we haven't created anything else that's within one trip around the circle that could work. And actually we have. Look what happens here if I just say like one time around the circle. What I would get is uh, 7 pi over 6. You see I'm just adding pi over 6 and one trip around the circle I get 7 pi over 6. That's within our acceptable range. That's one trip around. That's true. Now let's try it again over here. Let's say k was 1 here. I would get 11 pi over 6. Well that's acceptable. That is within the range. And so because this cosine function was compressed, we're getting extra answers that we hadn't gotten before because of this compression. Now, we'd want to check to see, well, what about more times? What if we spun around another time? Well, if I add another 6 pi over 6 to this, I'm going to be too big. That's going to be 13 pi over 6. That would be past 2, that would be past two pi. And if I add an another 6 pi over 6 to this, I'm totally, clearly past, because this is almost 2 pi already. So what we've got here is that we had to be careful. Let me talk you through this again. Finding a value for this cosine of this angle was easy. It happens at pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. But it wasn't a normal angle. It was a compressed angle. So what I did, because there's the possibility of some compressed solutions that we wouldn't have thought of normally is I'm going to add on that plus or minus 2 pi k. I'm going to throw that on there. Now let's solve this for x. Dividing both sides by 2 is going to affect both of these things. And I get pi over 6 plus or minus 6 pi over 6 over here. 5 pi over 6 plus or minus 6 pi over 6. Okay, now let's start writing down our solutions. We have get pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. We know those are answers. But because of the compression, I'm going to take this into account and this into account. If I take pi over 6 and add one more trip around the circle, I get another acceptable answer. That's in there. It's in one trip around the circle. And if I add 6 pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 here, I get another answer that's acceptable. That's one time around the circle. Now, if I went past that again, if I tried to add two times around the circle, it would go too far. So this is the end of my acceptable answers. I think that's the answer here. I think we're done. I don't think I have any more here. Yeah, they're just showing that. It, yeah, this is going to show you that they, they tried taking it two times around the circle and just saw that that's too far. So here they are saying these are our acceptable answers. Okay, very tricky, and I think that's all I've got on that one. But so please keep an eye on it. So what we saw here is we can solve these equations by making any of the substitutions off our formula sheet. We're welcome to make an identity switch if we need to. We can even factor these just as if they had been x squared plus x minus 1. We can factor these tr trig functions. We saw that earlier too. But then be on the lookout. If you ever have a strange, a double angle, a triple angle, something inside of that sine or cosine that is actually a horizontal compression because that compression is going to add the possibility that we have some values that we didn't expect. So this, the, the answer to that is what we do is we go ahead and add on that plus or minus 2 pi k and we work it, uh, continuing to solve that with the plus or minus 2 pi k on, on there and then we just check at the end and say okay well what values would fit within our acceptable range.